Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the College Express podcast. Today is a very special day because we're going to be streaming our very first anniversary edition of the College Express podcast. It's coming straight from my house, delayed, so it's actually not live. So be excited, <laughs> but don't be that excited. So very happy. I've been here since the start. My name's Tyler. As always, I'm joined with Kara, who has been with us from the start. Please clap at your computers right now. Very excited. Oh, yeah. Also followed by Mackenzie. <laughs> Mackenzie's been with us for quite a long time. And then followed by, you may have recognized this man. You may think you know this man. You do not know this man. It is not John. It is his brother, Don Geary. <laughs> John said he would never be seen again. And that remains to this day. To this day. To this day. So. John, wherever you are, we hope you're doing well. Welcome, Don. He sucks. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking all about your transition from high school to college. We have some fantastic questions to get into, so we're going to jump right in. All right, so our very first question of our podcast comes from a very special listener, and that listener is Taylor Elise01 from Instagram, who is also one of our College Express writers. So thank you, Taylor Elise, for writing in. And your question is, how do you prevent senioritis? Senioritis is one of the major plagues of getting into college, and it happens pretty much to everybody. I feel like we can all agree on that. The main thing is don't let it hit you so hard that you get your college letter rescinded because a college can do that. They can say, oh, whoa, 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 hey, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? And, and take back what they what And that's they how written. they'd say it to you. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it's actually, that's, that's how the letter's written. Yeah. 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 It's in calligraphy. It's yeah. whoa, 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 hey. Uh, and so they, they can take that back in a matter of seconds, if not minutes, if not hours, if not days, if not weeks, if not years. <laughs> Keep going. They Years, could do that. Really? They Decades. Could, they could yeah. do that. So how do you prevent senioritis is the question. We'll get into that. I think the number one thing is make a list, as you all know. So making a list is one of the things that I always bring up on this podcast all the time. Is spreadsheets. Spreadsheets. And I've, I've said it a million times before is have a goal. Walk towards that goal. You have to, in not only college and high school, just think of what you want to do and then how you're gonna get there. So make small baby steps, and as you're going, make sure you're hitting those steps, and every day you're gonna get a little bit better and a little bit better, so those steps can now become a little bit bigger because now you're able to understand that, okay, this is what I used to do, I didn't really understand what's going on, but now I can make leaps and bounds as I move forward. And so it, it gets easier. Not Again, more fun, but easier. Right, yeah. yeah, it's never ever more fun. It's no. always as difficult as it was day one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a huge, huge advantage is making the, the list and, and going through it. And also preventing senioritis is surround yourself with people that yeah. are in the same mindset as you. <laughs> like Mrs. Thistle. Like Mrs. Thistle, yeah. So uh, as John just mentioned, <laughs> and in non- Don. And, oh. <laughs> Don just mentioned. Donald. So as Donald just mentioned. Is it Don or is it Don? It's Donathan. 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 <laughs> 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 As Donathan just laughing. mentioned, yes, yes. I'm sorry, your name's funny. It's fun. a great name. So as Donathan mentioned, uh, I brought up in a not an outtake that uh, <laughs> we have been talking about how uh, you have to continue to do things that you, you don't like. In my case, I, I hated grammar in high school. And that was the opposite. Were you? Wait, yeah, clearly. I'm an editor. Surprise. Are you sure? That's what I do. <laughs> Still hates grammar to yeah. this day. <laughs> it's the worst. But yeah, I used to go after class every single day with John Dufour and myself and Mrs. Thistle, and we would sit there and we'd go through grammar, and I hated it. But you know what? I can write like a fit great child now. <laughs> so it helped me out. I used to have the one one grade, first grade. <laughs> Shout out I can't Thistle. even talk grammar. So yeah, it, uh, it definitely helps you as, as you move forward. So keep to a schedule. Routine is definitely a major factor that will help you in your senioritis. But uh, as I mentioned a little bit previously, surround yourself with people that are in the like mind too. Because if you get with people that are, hey, all right, we're almost there. We're like, we got into college and we can go and slack off a little bit. You're going to be hanging out and slacking off and, and not continuing on that path. So it does help when other people aren't trying to pull you to do those things. I don't know. What, what do you guys experience? 
I think it's a... <clears throat> sorry, go ahead. I'm going to interrupt you, and then no, you let I, me go, so I'm going to let you go first. <laughs> um, thank you. I'm uh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Um, I think there's no way to prevent senioritis. I think there are just ways to deal with it. And it's just like Tyler said, make a list. Just even if you don't want to do it, get it done. Um, I was not really good at the dealing with senioritis thing, um, but it kind of kicked in. I There was an issue with my senior thesis paper. And was I it the grammar? Huh? No, it wasn't the grammar. Huh. I can get it. I can get into Thank the God. whole story if you want. Get get the but, Yeah, I want to hear. It. Oh, basic. So basically, in December, <laughs> oh. I said I want to change my thesis, and my teacher said you can't do it. And then two days before the paper was due, she goes, "You need brand new books." And I said, "I have no research on those." Mm. And I had done all my research, and she goes, "Well, you shouldn't have let senioritis get to you." Oh, it had oh my God. Um, did so, you slash your tires? No, uh, <laughs> I did not. But I, I wrote the essay over the weekend, and she was With like, <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote the essay the over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, so I wrote the, my th- senior thesis that weekend, and I came in on Monday, and I passed it in. And on Tuesday, she came in, and she was like, you need to rewrite this, because it has nothing in it. Wow. Wow. So I couldn't let senioritis get to me, because if I didn't pass the thesis, then I wouldn't be able to graduate. Um, so, I mean, I get yourself into a dire situation. I guess that's how you prevent senioritis. Pressure. Yeah, <laughs> pressure. Well, I, yeah, that's if you work well under pressure. Because mm. if you don't, then you're I was just like annoyed more. because I had all... She said, you need to get rid of these two books, and that was where I had all my research. Why did she want the books done? She does she not like, like those me. books? No, she didn't like me. Oh. That's the problem. Don't have teachers that don't like, like you. Of mice and men yeah. and... You can prevent it. Like yeah. famous literary books? They were, actually. One of them was... Um, Alice in Wonderland, and she said, you shouldn't use that one. No. <laughs> oh, you said Alice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the book based off the movie. <laughs> the book based off the movie. Yeah, Got yeah. it. Yeah. It's an old movie. So, um, so yeah, they, I, just work with your teachers. Don't let them pull, bully you around. I think another part of mm. senioritis is it's you, you feel like you want to be done with high school, yeah. and mm. you just want to move on to the next phase of college. Um, so I think, you know, usually it's like, I guess, around... March, April, I don't know when you exactly feel it. But um, look forward to the things... September (laughs) 1st. Pretty much. Uh, Look forward to the things that are still coming up towards the end of the year, like uh, if you're interested in the prom that's coming up, or usually their senior activities the last week. Like there's exciting things that you're usually doing when you're a senior the last few months, so just keep that in mind to keep up the positive spirits. That, like, yeah, that's actually a good point, too, is that the senior you. year... <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> the, the senior year uh, activities that you do at the end of the year, you'll get eliminated from them if you're not yeah, getting yeah, sure. it. So that's a great motivating yeah. factor. To yeah. If you've always dreamt of going to prom, keep on track so you can go to prom. Um, <laughs> or prom, else that dream will be gone. <laughs> Do they, I don't think they Probably. do king and queen anymore. Oh, they did. Mine. Sure did no, mine, too. Yeah. I mind they got rid of them. Runner up, oh. baby. Although I am the youngest. Well, everyone remembers runner up. <laughs> no one remembers the winner. Runner up, baby. <laughs> I don't, remember, I, runner up. I don't remember who was in the court or anything. I didn't get to vote on it. I was really annoyed. Yeah, me neither. Well, no, actually, I think we had to write it on We had a homecoming court. We didn't get that from King or Queen. We didn't have I any of that. I voted myself. I got one vote. <laughs> no, all I remember is <laughs> zero. So you're going to say I only got one and it wasn't me. There you go. Yeah. You yeah. can't be prom queen or king without good grades, so. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, my senior year, I didn't really get senioritis because what? I did an internship. Ooh. And in the second semester of senior year, they said you can either keep going to class, which sounded so fun, or you could do an internship. So I did an internship and worked at a golf course all summer. Or, I guess, what is that, spring? Yeah. Spring. Worked at a golf course. Was it mini golf or professional? That's beside the point. <laughs> it was somewhere in the middle. And, uh,. It was it was really just cleaning golf carts and picking up balls at the driving range and definitely mini golf. It was the golf carts. It was the mini yeah. golf driving range. That's yeah. right. And, uh, they should have golf carts. Yeah, they should. That Campbell actually Farms? Would yeah. be very depressing. Was it? <laughs> Diabetes is a big factor. Drive the golf cart like an inch. All right, we're on the next hole. That's the best part of golfing: driving the cart yep. until yeah. you turn yeah. sixteen and a half and can actually drive a real car. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually still prefer driving a golf cart. Yeah. To a real car. Yeah. yeah. It's more fun. You can just like whip those around. Related to this, not related to your question, I'm sorry, Taylor. <laughs> I like to point. You can put in a snowmobile engine into a golf cart. It goes fast. <laughs> Real fast. Have wow. you done it? 
Um, I've written in one, I haven't done it myself. Uh, things you shouldn't do while you're procrastinating doing homework. True, mm-hmm. true. <laughs> Unless you want to be a mechanic. That's true. Oh, yeah, no, the fair point. If you want to be a mechanic, make that your like, senior <laughs> if you can thesis. Do that, you can be a mechanic. Yeah. If you can do that, you can do anything. <laughs> Spaceships. Play for the Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> Go to NASA and work for them. Anyways. So back on track to senioritis. So <laughs> we have, have senioritis. <laughs> to this day. Uh, so I worked at that golf course, and I think the little bit bigger of an issue was I worked at that golf course, which was a really nice course, and then after school would work at another golf course. So I was outside all day, which was great, but I was going from cleaning golf carts at 6.30 in the morning to 2.30 when school day would end, to then going cleaning golf carts and picking up golf balls till about 10 o'clock at night. And it's all about finding that balance, as you guys talked about, making sure that A, you're doing something you're, like, you're liking or studying something you're liking, or just making the best of a situation as you can and really trying to see that end goal or making the list and going out and checking each one off. Uh, I'm not much of a list person. I kind of like to wing things. Excuse me? <laughs> Pardon me? Pardon me? What? Uh, I like to You're wing things. You're coming to my house. <laughs> this is your dorm room. Get out With of here. With the <laughs> Get out of here. Um, but even just going off and checking something off a list feels good. Yeah. Just knowing, even as silly as it is, you see it in the movies, circling a date on a calendar and just Xing out every day. Having that end date in sight and knowing the actual day is a big deal yeah. as well. Playing a montage video. Yeah. The exa- that's right. I knew the exact day my internship was over and that day graduation was. And so just counting down every single day. Kind of like some people, yeah. not anyone sitting around here, does it work every day with every hour of the day. Yeah. Uh, but just counting down to something really helps as well. Yeah. No. I did that. I, did that I didn't even know people did that. I made that up the second time. Oh, I thought we were talking about someone on the table. <laughs> it's me, guys. Do you have a calendar every hour? You count every letter. Huh? What's up? <laughs> Wait, One more letter, letter until this is done. <laughs> um, I like you. make a good point with the countdown. So, um, mm-hmm. I did that a lot in high school. Like going through my time hop every day. I'm like, what am I counting down to? What What's 55 days away? Christmas. Why do I have to wait that long? <laughs> a few more the days. Start of the NFL season. <laughs> no, going to Ireland. Christmas Ooh, yeah. yeah. First semester abroad, that's apparently what it was. Mm. But yeah, having I, I, I always, always do countdowns count for like things I was excited for, or so like things that you're looking forward to in high school. Just yeah. to ask for that. They do. <laughs> so it can like send you notifications and be like, you have 50 more days. So now graduation. There were no apps. <laughs> yeah, every hour. We didn't have smartphones in our day. We were at Rocky talking in a meeting today about how some girls on our team like never had a MySpace or an AI. I, I never, never had, had a MySpace. You never had a MySpace? No. I knew I had. There, I was around <laughs> the MySpace time. Does MySpace exist for you? Uh, I invented MySpace. Are you tired of MySpace? Yes, sir. I'm everybody's friend. Are you tired of Parker? You know what I'm talking about? Tom? Oh, of course I know Tom. He's my best friend. Yeah. Well, he was my number one friend for a long time. That's my only friend. Facebook's not letting you put music on your profile. That sounds a lot like MySpace. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's MySpace. I st- still remember what song I had. Okay, that's right now, yep. What? what was it? Don't worry about it. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, it was a Jake Owen song. Country. So apparently yeah, it was country. Know it. I knew that part. I, I'll interrupt <laughs> you midway through. Let me keep going. <laughs> Senior rise is bad. Yeah. It doesn't anything. go away, apparently. <laughs> no, it does not. So yeah, to, yeah avoid it. Like, oh, it's it's oh, yeah. Everyone gets it, but don't get it. Barefoot blue jeans. Yeah. <laughs> Our next question is: How do you balance college application and regular homework without crying? And that's from at Sophie underscore Plas from Instagram. Um, you don't. Uh, <laughs> no, you you can you can get through it without crying. It's... No, no, no. <laughs> you, you you will Stop cry. Mm-hmm. No, like honestly, as long like as you put that on your list, crying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then check you'll it check it off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spreadsheet. Um. It, senior years <laughs> was an emotional time that's for sure there's a lot going on it's very stressful but you can you can make it through it um i i mainly just recommend using studies honestly um for me that was the biggest thing is having a study to go and i would i worked in the library so I'd go hand out passes and then i would just sit there and do homework um or cry or work on college <laughs> applications or work in my college um essay i actually also was in uh, 
I think AP composition is what it's called. Um, and our last assignment it was I was in there for junior year, and uh, our last assignment was to write our college essay. So I had that out of the oh, way. That's nice. yeah. yeah. So get thing, just get things, get the bigger parts out of the way as soon as possible. So get your big, get the college essay out of the way. I would recommend the summer before senior year. I know mm -hmm. it's basically over, but it's get to work on it now. High school kid. Huh? As a high school kid, you always save it till the last minute. Yeah. Never but, can get anything. Done. I don't know. I got I got mine done around like August. Yeah, it's like I, ready to go. Even if it's not the essay portion of it, I think another question that's going to pop up later is the um, the rubric? recommendations mm -hmm. uh, letters from yeah. from mm -hmm. you, people that like you, you know, <laughs> your teachers that like you. You don't you want to ask somebody someone. that doesn't like you. Yeah, we'll get more to but that later. <laughs> college might appreciate that. <laughs> get both sides <laughs> of the coin. Yeah, that's actually true. Pros and cons list. The, the, the benefit to that, though, <laughs> is you don't have to focus strictly on, oh, it's the summer and here's my free time. I'm going to write a college essay because that sounds terrible, uh, depending on who you are. It's fun. Yeah. Unless you love grammar. If, if you take the summer to make a list and decide <laughs> what teachers that you have influenced you the most and that you really have a connection with and decide that, okay, I really want this person to write a recommendation for me because they know me more than anybody else in this school does then make that list and then your first thing you do when you come back from your summer break is approach that person and say, I really appreciate if you write a letter of recommendation for me. And it's not scary. Uh, that's one of the things that I feel like a lot of students are worried about. Uh, a teacher is more than happy to write a letter of recommendation for you, especially if they've taken you under their wing and have mentored you during your high school career. So really pick the people that have helped you develop and influenced your life as you move forward and that's going to be a, a huge thing and we'll get more into that a little bit later but what i'm saying is the college application process is multiple parts yeah. so to make it the easiest is break it apart and find out here's what i can do now and here's what i can do later again the list thing i always say it and it's true is figure out what works the best and what you can manage in what amount of time and then just start tackling things because we've talked about the check mark when you make that check off the, the list it feels good and you know that you've accomplished something you can move nothing on to feels better though than crossing something oh out. yeah Scratching that's way better than checkbox. Yeah. so you can right never read it again yep. get it out of there it's better if you just burn it completely yeah that's throw, true. throw it right into the fireplace but then you lose I the rest of your it. list no no that's <laughs> fine multiple lists and we're done okay. <laughs> I mean, if you start the college application during the summer, you don't have to worry about balancing that with your homework because you but, don't have homework yeah, in the yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah. Worry about but, the summer, though. Summer yeah. reading lists? I mean, summer reading lists. There's Bookworm AP Wednesdays? Stuff. Come on. Yeah, but how much work do you really Remember put that from into the movie your theaters? summer reading? Yeah. No. Did you guys know Bookworm Wednesdays? No. no. Mm. You had to read a portion of a book, then fill out like a one page essay about the book you read, and then on Wednesdays, you could go to the movie theaters for free oh. to watch any movie you want. That sounds like Bookworm what Wednesdays. my mom did for the Harry Potter. The last Harry Potter book came out, and I had mm. summer reading, and I hadn't finished it. I had the one last book. Harry Potter book? The last Harry Potter Nobody book. Nobody wrote it for me? No one ruined it for me. I, I was you so mad. Yeah. I went to that like, yeah, the opening night party, and, hand you a movie and she was so like, you can't read it, it tomorrow. And I was like, yeah. I'm It was like some high school tomorrow. kid behind yeah. the desk. You handed it to them. And then I the did. I lied about what about reading the last book. I've never finished a Pitt story. I keep wanting to say survey or auction. It's not either of those. Uh, lottery, I guess, where yeah. they'd pull one name out of a hat, whoever wrote it, it, and then you win like a free popcorn. Oh. Yeah. So it was just write like a fifth grader and be like, this book was... Sweet. Was it a small popcorn or a large popcorn? <laughs> it was... <laughs> it was a medium. <laughs> At my size, it was the best popcorn you could ever have. Wow. It didn't matter the size, it was free. If it's free. Th so granted, we, we didn't have that in, in, in my grade school, but you know. we had the... Oh, that's the pizza, 1920s. The Pizza Hut. Have. Do you guys remember the Pizza Hut deal? No. no. Pizza Hut used to allow you to do a summer reading list, and you, it, whenever you finish the <laughs> amount of books, there's Bernie. There's your roommate. Um, whenever you, hey, whenever you finish books, I forget how many it was, like five or ten, you would get a free pizza, like a personal pizza from Pizza Hut. I would never uh, get a free pizza. I would five totally get books? a free pizza. I was a fat kid, and I used to lie <laughs> all the time about the books I read. Don't do that. How many um, times did you read The Hobbit? Ten times. Ten times. No. Two pizzas. Ten times <laughs> a week. <laughs> Two pizzas. So going back to balancing applications and your regular homework. Yes. Um, uh, a lot of times I found that my teachers would like be understanding toward the beginning of the semester. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. My, mine weren't super yeah. rough. I had one, uh, my humanities class, about halfway through the semester, she's like, 
we're just gonna i know you guys are stressed so we're gonna draw mandalas and i was like all right cool so we spent the next week coloring in class what's a mandala it's um it's the circle thing where you draw mm. in the pictures nelson <laughs> mandala close <laughs> you draw him <laughs> you draw a picture of him <laughs> very artistic Great. I'm smiling about over this. <laughs> this is a dog off he screen. He knows not to get. Not I think he might be on screen. Oh, no, oh. Not on screen. There's a dog on screen. <laughs> There's a dog. There's a dog. And Big of course, dog. we're distracted by him because what else do you do with dogs? Don't have a dog around you when, or do you have a dog around you when you're doing no, your college yeah. applications and stuff? Because mm -hmm. they're great for crying. That's actually a thing. Is dogs are like comfort. So when you're yeah. petting them, you get. Um, your stress release, yeah. yeah, endorphins release. I don't know whatever you want to call oh, it. But so that's mm -hmm. how you balance like a, college applications and homework. Get a dog. Crying. Right. Yeah, yeah, get a dog. A dog. And even yeah. if you, if yeah, yeah. Bernie yeah. knows we're talking about him. Yeah, Bernie, um, this is the most confidence I've ever seen. Him. He's <laughs> popping up in that screen. I don't know if he's on this one, but he's on that one. Yeah. But yeah, so I think yeah, to to bring it all back to it is don't don't procrastinate. Don't wait till the last yeah. second possible. Is. Which is easier said than done. Yeah. I yeah. definitely procrastinate. Doing a little bit each week. Yeah. Setting right. like a little bit of time to do something. I well, I think it's also important to bring up too that the Common App yeah. is mm -hmm. going to help you out significantly. We haven't talked about that in, in this particular podcast. We do talk about it on the application process, yep. which I believe is our second episode that we ever did, yep. featuring Rachel, who was a fantastic guest. So You mean almost exactly a year ago? Almost, exactly. almost a year ago, wow. which is uh, pretty crazy. But who yeah, the, the, the Common... No. No. Sorry. Did we know? We're all guests Dude, there at the three first, of us one. The first yeah, one. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, on that podcast, we talked about the Common App and how it's beneficial to use that, and then you can apply to a lot of schools, and the school list is growing every yeah. year. So that will help you significantly when you decide. But I also recommend highly that you personalize each one that you're applying yeah. to, so that it's not just the generic "Hey, how are you?" Um, <laughs> application. That that's not going to yeah. fly. So um, going back to the Common App. Um, mm -hmm. There's obviously there's the basic information that you need to fill out your name, your address, all that stuff. So just as soon as the Common App opens, go in and put that in because then it's it's so tedious. I know typing in your name and all that, but then it's out of the way. You don't mm -hmm. have to do it again. Um, and I know the Coalition app is getting popular now, um, and a lot of students use that. And you can actually sign up for the I think it's the Coalition app early. Uh, and you can start adding things. So if you're watching this and you're not uh, going into senior year, look into other um, app services, not app services, um, platforms mm -hmm. uh, that are popular. I know, I think CapEx has one too, uh, which isn't as popular. Obviously the Common App is the most popular, but the Coalition and CapEx uh, have a lot of good things with them too, and they're getting to be more popular among colleges. So look into those and see if you can get started even earlier than just the summer before your senior year. And that's a great way to balance things because then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> No need to balance if it's not. Better. No need to balance if it's already done. Mm -hmm. Our third question is from Horse Rider two seven 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 from Instagram, and it is how many recommendation letters should I send for college applications? I only got one letter from one teacher wow. and sent it to everyone. Um, I never read the letter, so I don't what? know. <laughs> you have to read the letter. I didn't. I know. They really? Didn't no, know. they they yeah. just uploaded theirs. Yeah, and I they sent that it they to the colleges me. for me. Mine to me. I sent it to every college. Handwritten. Really? What? Oh, oh, right. 1920s. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. You are if you use the yeah. Face app. I use MySpace. No, this MySpace. is the Face app. This is him younger. Huh? <laughs> He's <laughs> using it. Right Only now. we know what he really looks like. <laughs> 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 I'll wow. edit that in. <laughs> Going Crick back to here. recommendation letter. <laughs> so you use one recommendation letter? So I used one, and I um, got it from a teacher, one of my hardest teachers, who I don't think liked me very much. But what I was did, the teacher's name? Thistle. I mean, he, I think he passed away, so uh, it's okay if I say his name. <laughs> McDougal? McDougal. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's enough McDougals in the world. Yeah, there's a lot of words yeah. about the same yeah. name anyways. That's true. Um, McDougal like, Hobbs. What subject was it? It was AP History. No, Honors History. I, I wasn't smart enough for AP. What so it was subject was it? History. 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 Got it. History. <laughs> <Okay>. History. <laughs> oh, it's Latin. Um, 
But I did well in his class, and he was, like, one of those guys that was very tough and wouldn't mm. <laughs> let you know if he liked you, and I just assumed mm. he didn't, but he actually asked me if I'd, like to have him write my recommendation oh, letter and I yeah. didn't know who to ask. So. What, what made you... Yeah, what made me pick him? Right, yeah. <laughs> um, and I figured, you know, he'd probably give a good perspective of me as a student because he'd be very blunt and harsh. Mm. Um, but in a good way, cause hopefully. Um, I actually don't know. But um, I think the only thing about that was I wasn't interested in history. And mm. even though I didn't know what I was going to major in, it wasn't really to my advantage in any way to be, like, talking... I mean, a recommendation is... Yeah from any teacher is great but I would say try to look towards I, a teacher that is in a field that you're interested in I, or an employer I, yes and uh, no I, yeah I, I, I disagree do. with that yes actually I, um, oh, I kind of split the difference personally <laughs> how dare you <laughs> no I'm just, I'm just no, so no, I, okay. think, I think that's actually an important thing to raise up an important fact to raise up is that uh, a teacher that sees you struggling in whatever you're doing and if you're putting your best foot forward during that process and you're showing that teacher that you come every day prepared and you're showing improvement over time and that you're showing the dedication that you yes I know I'm struggling in this field it's not what I want to learn it's not what I want to do but I do want to show that I have the drive then a teacher is going to realize that they're going to see that and they're going to write you one of the best recommendation letters possible if they're one of the most uh, nice, too. nice yeah. human being <laughs> if they're not a nice human being they might not but yeah. um I, I feel that a lot of the time the person that sees you struggle the most is going to give you the the honest opinion which you said and talk about the dedication that you have to that course and who you are as a person not who you are in that class or who you are as a, a student in that if that makes sense it's a little weird to say it that way but um i think that yeah. Is my argument anyway. I am. Um, yeah. <laughs> going, now you know. <laughs> going back to the, to the amount of recommendation letters, too, um, I think it depends on the college. I, for most of mine, mm -hmm. I needed two. Mm -hmm. Really? And mm -hmm. I kind of mm -hmm. split yeah. the difference between that. I had um, my AP comp teacher write mine, Mr. Michaelitis, thank you so much. Um, sure and, <laughs> and my Italian teacher, thank you, Ms. Mayette. Um, an Italian, Italian teacher? Italian, Italian, yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. I that's took, awesome. I took Italian classes. Can so. you say something in Italian for us? See. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, but I, I honestly, I didn't do super well in her class, but she saw that she, she knew me. I, I spoke a little bit of Italian, um, and we like got along really well. And it was great to have her write that recommendation letter. I could have asked an English teacher, but I didn't really like my English teacher from junior year. And That's a big part of it. You yeah, don't just mm -hmm. choose an English teacher because you're interested. In English. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If you're like very close to that yeah. person, or if you did like, really well. Or... Yeah, I asked my English teacher senior year, the one that didn't like me. Um, to help me choose, I had to do a portfolio because I was going into a writing program, and I asked her to help me choose stuff for my writing program and give me critiques, and she was just kind of like, here, and didn't give me any feedback, and she's like, I didn't know what you wanted, I was like, I feedback. wanted you to give me, to edit it, to tell me how I could make them better, and she's like, oh, I don't care. Oh. Great, right. wow. I do. So she was. And what was her name? Huh? No, <laughs> we're not doing that. Mrs. Thistle. Um, Mrs. Thistle. No. Mrs. Thistle is a saint. <laughs> no, we're not talking about that lady. Um, well, I'll tell you her first name, Leslie. Leslie, Leslie. Thistle. No. <laughs> Leslie Thistle is yeah, a saint. Yeah, Leslie did not like me. So, like, if, if you have that kind of a relationship with a teacher, even if it would look great to have them on your resume, like, I don't know if it's your AP physics teacher and you're hoping to go into physics for college, um, don't do that. Don't feel like just because they have something to do with your major that you have to choose them if you don't think they're going to write you a good recommendation. You want to make sure that you're going to get a good recommendation um, because it. It's not the most important part of your college application, but it is still part of your college application. So just, you know, don't willy-nilly choose them. So I'm gonna bring up uh, two things. Uh, one, I'm gonna answer directly with the question, which you already did too, is how many recommendation letters should I write for my college application? Or should I You should write zero. You should, you <laughs> you should, should write, write any. You shouldn't you should write any, but you should receive. Uh, <laughs> it, de it depends. Right. And in a lot of the cases, two was the number when I was yeah. going through, and that mm -hmm. seems to be with care too. So um, two potentially, but you can never have too you, many, you can have too few. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. the, so that that's a valid point, is going out and trying to figure out what, what makes the most sense. And you can get multiple recommendation letters and then decide which ones you feel speak truly to you. Well, sometimes. And then, and then it depends if they send it to you or right. send it right to yeah. the school. That, that's another valid yeah. point, too. Uh, so the sooner you get them, the better. 
Yeah. One of the things I want to bring up is we're not talking about <coughs> everybody has talked about their high school and finding teachers and teachers that relate. You can get a recommendation letter from somebody that you work yeah. with. Yeah. And that's actually what I did because when I was at Discount Madness, what's up? Down in uh, Pelham, New Hampshire, right on the border of Drake at Mass. Also great, one in Tuxbury. Great Tuxbury. place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the one in Tuxbury is preferred distributors, but guys. I think it is Discount oh, Madness now. Did they change it? Yeah. Awesome. But they're going out of business. So. All right, awesome. No, um, that's sadness right there. <laughs> Discount Sadness. Yeah. Some grammar for you. But I did, I did receive a recommendation letter from one of the assistant managers at the time. And it was just my work ethic from being there. So that showed a different side of me that isn't the education side. It's not, but it does still show, and we brought it up before, the drive yeah. for what you really want to represent yourself as. And I feel that gave me a slight edge to other applications that are coming in because a lot of the applications are strictly high school. Mm-hmm. So when they see something that pops out that's, oh, I'm not a high school teacher. I've worked retail for 20 plus years of my life and I'm writing a recommendation letter for a high school student. It pops out and especially when Rachel was talking about, again, on episode two, the college application process and her working, the ones that stand out are the ones that grab their attention is, oh, this is different. What, what, what makes this special? So I feel like think think differently on that too. It's you are required to have as many as the college requires, and again, most common is two. But pick the ones that really represent you. And again, if your work ethic's not great, and you're working somewhere, don't ask somebody for a recommendation <laughs> letter. But <laughs> some yeah. of them, um, some of them will even ask you for different types as well. So they'll want like a teacher, and then someone in your community, whether that's yep. a religious connection or a work connection or if you go to dance classes and your dance teacher writes your recommendation they'll ask for like an academic re- recommendation and a non-academic one so you can kind of play around with that and um it might you might need like three or four recommendation letters total that you send to different colleges so like if one of them says you need two teacher recommendations then you get the two teacher ones i think also most um, schools will require a third recommendation and it's from a guidance counselor Mm -hmm. that the guidance counselor just always has to send um, for the most part. So I I guess technically the number is usually around three, but you don't even have to Get to know your the, guidance counselor. Yeah, definitely get to know your guidance counselor before or else they, they write it. They'll know what to write, and they'll just be like, yeah. very generic. And they'll call letter. Her. Yeah, it, so, it kind of sucks. There was someone um, my senior year, um, a, there was a guidance counselor who retired the year before. So oh, someone so came in, like, counselor. yeah, a new mm. guidance counselor. They didn't know mm. any of the students. And I was like, that's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes it wasn't me wonder my how many guidance counselor, but. Write, or yeah. send out. Well, they were just basically meeting lessons. with seniors the whole first couple of months, being like, "Tell me about yourself," and taking yeah. notes and just trying I'm to. I'm the know them. number one student of my high school. <laughs> uh, I graduated with the 4.0, and I take all AP classes. And, and it's I really think that you should write me a letter of recommendation right now. <laughs> they uh, they can tell all that they have before you look up that information. Yeah. <laughs> Not in my day. <laughs> 1920s is all <laughs> Trust was big. Good time. <laughs> the roaring, roaring time. <laughs> yes. I know <laughs> one thing. We can do this podcast too long. <laughs> too long. I, I would love to speak to a per, an admissions person at college and just say, what is it you look for in one of these letters? Because... Rachel! Yeah, watch, I, watch I episode two. Right? <laughs> in, in our case, more recently, they always say, make sure your resume is very catching. It yep. looks good. So I'd be curious to know... You know, you know, they read so many admissions letters and all these different things. What specifically should they look for? And I wish I had that answer. But the person who might have that answer is your guidance counselor. Yep. So that goes right back to get to know your guidance counselor. Um, or even talk to your admission counselor. Talk to any. Um, yeah. Because when you go on college mm-hmm. visits or just even send them an email, just say, I'm considering who I would want to write my recommendation letters. Mm-hmm. What uh, sort of, what do you look for in one yeah, of those? Yeah, that would be the most impactful. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I think that, that's actually questions. like a very underrated thing is when you're in high school applying for college, you think of the high school teachers, you think of the, yep. your, your high school guidance counselor. You don't think of the college that you're applying for. So if you already have a college in mind, reach out prior to, yeah. get that connection immediately. And that's actually something that Rochi also brought up on the podcast is somebody that I've established a relationship with and then it gets down to the application yep. process. I already know this person in particular, yep. 
So now I have this connection. So if somebody comes in with the same amount of, yeah. you know, the, the qualifications, yeah. I can decide that this person is going to get in because they've yeah. shown the extra effort and they've already reached out and they said, I'm really interested in the school and I want to be a part of this program and yeah. this community. So this that's something that we haven't really talked about yet, but um, yeah. you just brought it up. So that's a great point. Yeah, no, this goes off topic of the question, which we're fine with doing on this podcast, <laughs> obviously. <I> dare you. <laughs> um, <laughs> But always make sure to talk to and recognize the admission counselor. Was Sean the admission counselor for New England when you were there? No. Oh. Well, I met Sean. I was a sophomore. Um, I don't remember his last name at the moment, but he was, I don't know if he still is, but he was the Northeast um, like admission counselor for Champlain. And every single college uh, fair, I would go directly to Champlain desk. I would pick up the free stuff, I'd say, hi, I'm Kara, we met at the last one, yada, 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 have a little chat. Every time I went to campus, hey, I'm Kara, met you at this last thing, oh yeah, and they start to recognize you, you want to make sure that you have a face to your name mm -hmm. and asking questions like, I'm trying to pare down who I want to write my recommendation, what is it that you look for, do you look for teachers, do you look for uh, leaders in the community, do you look for dance teachers, do you look for bosses, um, what would you like to see? Um, and giving them, you know, just just asking them because they'll tell you what they want. So what you really, well. really mean? Yeah, I was just gonna sing that. <laughs> might as well give them what they want. Give the people what they, they want. Really Come on. All right, this next question is from uh, Jay Tut in the Cut, <laughs> and he asks, or she, is that on Instagram? It's on Instagram, yes. All right. Yep. Uh, how can the transition from being in high school to being in college be easier? Great question. Uh, I would say go in very open-minded. Um, in a lot of cases, people choose to go to the same school as a ton of their friends. Uh, I originally went to the University of Pittsburgh, and I was the third person from my college or my high school to ever go to that school. So, I wanted to go to a place that was brand new. I know a lot of kids, 180, 190 from my graduating class went to UMass Amherst, and they all want to go because that's safe. They have their friend group already. Yeah. I really like the fact of going to Pittsburgh. Because I love sports. Uh, they were really good at football and basketball. And they're not anymore. But they used to be. And In the MySpace days. In the <laughs> prior to the MySpace days. Oh, Dan Marino well, days. Well, that's 20s. <laughs> that was 1800s. Uh, <laughs> the beauty of that is you can go to those schools and really try to figure out who's your friends. Now, I remember back in my senior, junior year of high school, maybe one of those two, I went for a walk with my dad because he was asking me to. I was being lazy all day, so I had to go with him. <laughs> and he said, you know what's really weird? I, said, I don't know, the fact that we're on a walk? And he said, yeah. But what's really weird is the fact that you haven't even gone to college yet, and that means you haven't even met your best friends yet. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you mean? I have Matt, I have Shane, I have Jamie. And he goes, no, those, those are your high school friends. You've never met your best friends yet. And I thought that was the weirdest statement because you have that comfort zone already. But I went to Pitt. And instantly, you're thrown into this group where you think all of them have this inner circle already, but it turns out that most of the time, they're all kind of in the same boat as you. True. Your roommate, which is super scary at first, but at the same time, so fun to get to know that person because you're going to be literally living on top of them every day. Unless it's old Rob. What? <laughs> old Rob. Rob. Go back and for... Can you tighten the hut? <laughs> Can you tighten that? Pizza hut. Free books. <laughs> Book of Monsters. <laughs> so anyways, um, go in open-minded. Say you have 50 friends already. I don't even know if I have 50 regular friends anyways, but if you, if you know 50 yeah. people that are going to your college, cool, you have that support group. But at the same time, stay behind a little bit and just try to find your own group because say you're a jock and you always hung out with the jocks, but it turns out that you love playing video games. Well. Now you can kind of be who you want to be. You don't have to stick to with that group that you knew before. I don't know. They could have been playing Madden. Yeah. <laughs> be that as it may. Yeah. The jocks and... Well, all right, whatever. I'm thrown <laughs> off now, but still. I don't know. I did the, I did the same thing yeah. for my college. No no one from my high school went to Champlain. And it's terrifying at first. It's, it's so scary. You think scary. it's a horrible decision. No, no. And then you go. But I was also really excited about it. Like, one mm -hmm. of the reasons yeah. that I chose Champlain is because no one else was going there because... I went, my school was six years long, and I, I feel like I've talked about this before, but I 
felt like I was stuck in a box. Your high school was six years long? It was six years long. It was a, It started in seventh grade and then went to... Oh, yeah. I thought you meant it was a six-year program? Yeah. yeah. High school? Yeah, it was a six-year high school what program. What kind of grammar program were you in? <laughs> Mrs. Thistles. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'd known these same people for six years and I felt like I had changed... You're going to find out who you are in senior year. Like... A little bit, um, and then you're gonna go to college, and you're gonna be like, "Oh, you're that's not who I am." Yeah, you can become and anyone you want. That's what I wanted. Is I wanted you to be someone entirely different. Persona. Yeah, like you. Peter the video became games. what? Uh, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> um, <but laughs> you can be an entirely different person. Um, like I don't know, High School Musical. Zach Efron's character, Troy Bolton, was the totally basketball unrelated. guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, 100%. He was the basketball guy, and then he went to college, and he wasn't just the basketball guy. This is so. a valid, valid point. <laughs> exactly. I never saw it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I think we're in the middle of something. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. You're welcome. Hey, how am I? <laughs> but Ooh. yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with that is when you're jumping from high school to college, it, it, you're, you, the question is how can the transition from being in high school to being in college be easier? I think it couldn't be easier. Mm -hmm. You have the opportunity to start fresh, as Kara said. So when you when you roll up into college, it's you you already have your group of friends in high school and you're kind of unfortunately in that in that that fit of you, you get typecasted and you're 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 kind of you're in that group which is unfortunate and fortunate at the same time because you're comfortable but once you get into college you you get pushed out of your comfort zone you start meeting people you start experiencing new things that you've never experienced before so you have the opportunity to see if you like something or you don't like something and really in develop who you want to be and what what you like and what you don't like so i think it's actually College is one of the easiest things in your development it's one that of the you'll experience. Things, yeah. Biggest things in your development. Yeah, uh, the your four years in college are going to develop you more than anything in your life, I believe, and that uh, is very true to myself. Especially with the friends that I have now, a lot of them are the core college group, as John mentioned. You know, your father on the walk, mm -hmm. stir frying. He was yeah. my high school friend. <laughs> um, yeah. I also, um, when I went to college, I had friends for the first two years that I don't talk to any. I talked to my roommate and um, one girl that I knew, but I was best friends with this group of guys, and um, we just stopped talking. I got new friends when I went to Ireland, and it wasn't like I didn't want to be with their friends. They kind of didn't want to be my friends. Did they not accept your new accent? Huh? Did they not accept your new no, accent? No, they like, wanted to drink in the dorms, and I wasn't cool with, with it. <laughs> So, yeah, I know. Just yeah. like, even, like Tyler said, I don't think the transition can be easier. I mean, you're looking at, like, it, yeah, it is a scary you're thing. You're nervous over nothing. Yeah, I think it is It is a nerve-wracking thing. It is extremely frightening to go from being in high school to being in college. But I think if you, like John said, if go into it with an open mind, and honestly, if I was socially anxious in high school, so it was really mm -hmm. scary for me to, like, start talking to people just randomly and be like, hey, how are you? And, like, things like that. Oh, yeah, how are you? I didn't say it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> but if you just, you know, if you start talking to people, and that's what makes it easier is kind of overcoming. It's not easy overcoming that fear to, like, go over and be like, hey, I see you're sitting alone at lunch. I am also going to be sitting alone. Do you mind if we sit together? To be fair, though, is uh, the colleges will do a ton of icebreakers, yeah. too. And so you two usually weeks. get there, what, what, yeah, that's true. The, you get there, like, what, two weeks before? Yeah. And so two weeks is only freshmen. Mm -hmm. and that's in some schools. Yeah. Yeah, ours was, I think, three days. It was, it was, three days. It yeah. was a week. Mine was two I days. missed mine completely, but, well, that's on a different podcast. Mine time, was but. three days long. But Tyler <laughs> would have been at his, and it would have been three days long because it's the same school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but you, you'll have those experiences where you get to meet people beforehand, and it's strictly yeah. your class. So everybody in the class is in the exact same boat you are. Yeah. So they're, you know, they're coming from different places, but they're having the exact same experience of all my friends are gone, I don't yeah. really know the crowd that I fit in with, and, and what, what jives with me, so you end up, what jives? <laughs> you end up sitting down and trying to figure out okay, what, what, again, what do I like, what don't I like, what what group do I fit yeah. in with? So, yeah, I think it's, it's one of the most fun times of your life. You get to 
just figure out what you, what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Well, it's crazy because when you think about it, like most people who like they went to high school with the people they've gone to like middle school, yeah. elementary school. So you probably had like the same group of friends since you were very Three. young, and you haven't had. Like so you haven't really out. had to make new yeah. friends because you have like a group of friends. You might have met a few people, but you've never had to like go out there by yourself and like actually interact and yeah. like get to know someone without any knowledge of them before. So college is like a great uh, way to like get it, uh, used yeah. to meeting new people and learning that life lesson of how do I like you said go up to someone and be like, hey, how yeah. are you? <laughs> Like, that can be very intimidating, but everybody, freshman year is in the same boat where yeah. they, know, like, they may know one or two people, but everybody wants to get yeah. to know new people, and everybody wants to, like, find a yeah. group of friends, so it's exciting. I, I remember during orientation, I, this came to mind because you said we're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. We were literally on, on the boat. same boat. Uh, we were I, on a boat. <laughs> I did show up for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the boat. There, were, there was I a was boat. On the boat. <laughs> there was a boat, and they had like they had like black jacket. It was like it wasn't real gambling and all that, but they had they had a bunch of cool stuff, and there was I like a dance my floor. Life. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a dance I'll bet floor. Tri Triffy. Triffy. <laughs> and I started dancing, and this other girl yes. started dancing, and everyone else was a wallflower except me, this other girl, and like a like group of like you know the circles. Um, was that other <laughs> girl Tyler because that sounds like something you <laughs> would do it was basically the younger version of Tyler it was a girl and but like I, I it was dark we like the wig, the didn't talk myself. we didn't <laughs> introduce to, uh, um, each other but like I saw her on campus and we weren't best, best friends, friends but I had like class with her and like, like three years later she's like oh my gosh I remember you from orientation mm -hmm. um, so, so I guess it's super easy to make friends and just doing what you love and all that stuff because like I said I didn't talk to her more than like hey how's it going um, and like, the next few weeks, she was like, hey, what's up? Whatever we passed each other on campus, so. I remember for my orientation, I had my roommate at that time, because they would have, Pitt was so big, they would have a bunch of students go one week, then the next week a bunch of students would go, and then a bunch of students would go, and at the end they would all come together. Mm -hmm. So I went to an earlier one, and I had a different roommate than the one I was going to live with. I remember we, I was talking to him, and then he was talking to someone else who was actually going to be his real roommate, and we all got to talking through each other, and it turns it's out we... The uh, it was you and awake, uh, and uh, <laughs> we uh, all got to talk and realized we each like to play basketball. And I remember we then went to the head of orientation and said, "Hey, I know that tonight's movie night or something weird like that, but can we go play basketball?" And the lady was like, "Absolutely, you can." So she got us all basketball. Absolutely and not. <laughs> no. If, if you're gonna, gonna you're gonna bond, you must be doing what we say. Well, we had to play basketball in front of the whole freshman body, and. Uh, wow. So, so you slam dunking on fools. I was maxing and relaxing everywhere. <laughs> well, it was great because even after that, we all stayed together. After we all left, and then we all got in, and we're like, "Oh, we play basketball together during orientation. That's yeah. awesome." Um, but kind of changing the topic a little bit. So those little connections. Little connections. Yeah. I think we're talking about it from one side, but we're totally missing out on the if you're close to your parents part because. I'm That's super true. close to my parents. Yeah, yeah fam family, family, friends. Yeah. I love my family, but I was also I was not sad to go to college. They, I've always been, they, they, they were a little sad. They That's were a, a little tough sad. Time. When you're moving and you're going, you're like, all right, I'm here, I'll see you later. They're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my dad's like, peace out, dude. Yeah. My parents had already dealt with my brother. They're like, do you need us mm. to stick around? I'm like, no, you can leave. I was the first. Like, you can go home. Uh, yeah. So my parents were sad. Luckily, they waited to cry until they got back in the car so yep. I didn't see it. Um, but it is sad after a while because. Were there tinted windows? <laughs> was it you and awake? Uh, yeah. I'm your dad. I'm your dad. Tyler's every significant person in your life. Yeah. Oh, well, we've talked about this. I know. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so it's just tough leaving your family sometimes, but you have to know that once you graduate college, you can go live in their basement if you want to, like some other people. What's up? I don't know who. I live on the second floor, <laughs> but not the basement. You, you go back eventually. You go back every other week if you want to. Yeah. True. So it's not like, even if you live in California and you go to school in New York, you're going to see them at Thanksgiving. They're going to come fly to you. You're going to see them pretty often. So don't feel like and it's gonna they're going to fly forever. And not when you start to Thanksgiving. Yeah. Like that seems like it's a long flies time. It flies by. It flies by. And the whole reason you get nervous first is because you feel like you're alone until you start yeah. talking to people and the days start flying by. And yeah. I remember my parents would send me, my dad, my grandmother, they'd send me emails like every week that was like, parent update number one for college. Oh, and you're like, oh, make sure you do well. All right, you send me an email. Let me, let me ask you a very important, important question. You already know the answer. No, no, no. My, my father is not technically capable. <laughs> so, so when he, he sends emails... He has all my siblings. 
it's gonna, it's gonna crash. <laughs> when he sends me emails, it's all caps. <laughs> so, so hey, how are you? <laughs> well, let's just clarify. Let's clarify the fact that your dad was having a stroke or something. He said, "Hey, text me whenever you can." Oh, and it was just so nonchalant like that. So you have a weird relationship. Yeah, that actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't a stroke, but, stroke, but he, he was getting, getting his... Um, or something? Uh, no, he had, uh, his appendix was about to burst. And so... No, it was so nonchalant, though. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he sends me a text, text message in the morning. It's about 7 a.m. already up, and it says, Hey, text me when you get a chance. So I call him. He says, Hey, I don't want you to be freaked out or anything. I'm in the hospital. We're about to go into surgery. What? I'll be right there. That's a typical day. Fox and Yeah. You do the same thing in America. And uh, yeah. Bernie's yeah. dog. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie never responds back. But yeah, I used to get those emails every week where it was like, make sure you're eating a nutritious meal every day. Yeah. Make sure you're going to class and stuff like that. I love you, Dad. I was like, ah, whatever. But eventually those, all you realize as you get older that those are their ways of checking in on them, making sure you're not dead. Uh, making sure your appendix isn't going to destroy you. <laughs> that so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Going off of that, um, I, my, my best friend... My best friend I've known her since she was born, literally, it's been 24 years. And um, we were. You know would... she was born? No, I was not. But like she was. <laughs> I'm only a year older than her. But she lives, she's always lived two houses away from me, and except for when we went to college, it was heartbreaking. But we would write letters to each other, and that, that really helped with the transition, too. Yeah, because yeah. it's nice to get mail. So, I mean, if your dad isn't very technically challenged. <laughs> No, he, he, is is he, actually, he actually writes in caps too. So <laughs> <laughs> his, doesn't he speak in caps? <laughs> no, no. So he doesn't like know what lowercase is. Yeah. yeah. His world is not lowercase. Yeah. <laughs> that looks great. What is that? Yeah. So so, so, so three, three times times bigger. So that's fun, and then you get mail. I love getting mail. Don't get skyping too. Yep, skyping's yep, a I guess the thing that was FaceTime. FaceTime, Skype, Google Hangouts, Facebook yeah. has a Google thing. Google Hangouts is dying. Oh, yeah. it is? Yeah. Oh, so I love Google Hangouts. Yeah. Um, MySpace coming back. back. Right. Yes. yes. MySpace. MySpace. Nice no, it's, it's, it's called MySpace now. Yeah. <laughs> My <laughs> Very good. Uh, FaceTime. Um, so, yeah, video <laughs> chatting is a huge thing. When I was in um, Ireland, I would video chat different people throughout the week. And it was great. Mm-hmm. It was always super late at one of our places. It would be like at 2 o'clock in the morning. I remember... Um, I missed Thanksgiving that year. That's the only year I've missed Thanksgiving with my You're family. Huh? You're <laughs> no. That's a throwback to uh, six months ago. <laughs> but uh, it was great, yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, you can FaceTime your dog and do that. I, I tried. Yeah, he talked yeah. about Your dog had nothing to do with it, right? He did not like the camera. You know who else wouldn't like that? Bernie. That dog right there. <laughs> I don't think he'd care right now. That's how no. camera shy he is right now. He's a little yeah. Yeah. Too hot. So that was our one year anniversary podcast of the College Express podcast. I hope you all enjoyed. <laughs> this was all about your high school transition to your college days. And we made it as easy peasy lemon squeezy as possible for you. We hope you enjoyed. Godspeed. <laughs> if you did not know, this podcast has... Podcast. Podcast. This podcast comes out Monday through Friday of the first week of every month. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one question gets answered per day. And then on Friday, the entire podcast is released. Please like the video if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you want more information like this in the future. Or if you want more information about college cooking, about college fitness coming soon, about college conversations with students just like you. And we will see you next time. (music) 